Hey everyone, hope you're doing great. My name is Fabio and this is Creativo Builds. I'm very excited to share with you this project I call the Oreo, in which I built my own Plex server using a broken laptop. Reason for doing this, uh, well, I had been using my laptop as my Plex server and anytime I took it anywhere or I accidentally closed it, no more media, I couldn't watch anything. So I definitely needed to find a more permanent solution. After watching this video by DIY Perks, I was pretty impressed and inspired, really. By the way, you should totally check it out if you haven't already. I'll put the link in the description. I wanted to create something that was truly unique, something that I didn't need to hide inside some cabinet. Uh, regular computer cases are pretty boring for the most part, and the ones that are not are uh, pretty uh, expensive and out of, just out of my budget. So necessity and design challenge, and a little bit of creativity, and Pen pineapple, apple pen. <laughs> so the basic design was to have these two pieces of wood sort of sandwich the equipment and a ribbon of light running in between it. Thermals, you may ask? The idea was simple. So here from the bottom, push it out from the top. How to hide the bends? Now that, that was a little tricky. I was gonna have the edge of the cutout angled so that the bends could sit just outside of the line of sight. All right, everybody, enough talk. Let's go check it out. In order to keep the cost down, I decided to buy a used laptop from eBay that had a busted screen but was otherwise functional. Once the laptop came in, I began taking it apart. A couple of screws here and a couple of broken tabs there and I was able to get the components I needed. Luckily, I didn't break anything too important. Laying out the pieces was the next step. I used some plastic standoffs since I wanted to elevate the motherboard. That way, I could put the hard drive underneath it and it also allowed for airflow. I needed to find a drill bit that came close in size to the standoff mail, but in doing so I also realized I need to find some hand lotion. So I had to flip the fan, because I needed the air to go in the other direction. The connector wire needed to be longer, but luckily I had a similar cable laying around. The colors didn't match, but that wasn't a big deal. In order to create each half of the Oreo, I was going to use a bunch of 2x4s and 2x6s and layer and glue them together to create a solid block I could shape later. So before I put them together, I got rid of the lumber's rounded edges by running them through the table saw. Next, I chopped them down to length. To create the recessed portion was a bit tricky without a bandsaw. I didn't know how else to get the cutouts shaped with the tools I had. So I cut the edge pieces off now, I would attach them back later. I'll point them out. To get the shape of the cutout, I just ran it back and forth a bunch of times on the table saw. This took forever, and probably my least enjoyable moment of the build. So I literally spent 10 minutes playing with these tabs before I decided to break them. Highly recommend it. The texture this created was really cool. It gave me some ideas for some other projects I have in mind, just not this one. So after sanding, I could see there were some areas that I left the blade too high up, but it's fine, the motherboard will cover that up. For the outer layer, I wanted to make sure the wood wouldn't shift around too much, as wood likes to do. So I put some pegs in between them to keep them from moving. Any kind of change in the moisture and the wood pieces would move on their own. Next was the glue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Once the pegs were in place, I used some wood glue on the boards and clamped them together. After the glue had finished drying, I needed to sand some of the imperfections and dry glue before gluing on the next layer of the block. I used a combination of glue, clamps and nails to hold it in place, but honestly, I probably could have used a few more clamps, but they're kind of expensive. Once the glue had dried, I needed to cut the angles close to the curve I wanted to make, so I maxed out the angle on my table saw and ran the block through. That's pretty close. I knew I would shape it with the angle grinder later, so this got me close enough. This was probably my favorite part. I felt like Michelangelo sculpting David, with a high power tool of course. I wanted to round the edges, so I drew and cut it out of a piece of paper, traced them in all corners and continued to grind into shape. Very nice. Then came the fire. Fire, you ask? 
Well, I wanted the wood to have an interesting texture, something unique to wood. Shosugiban was the clear option for me. For those that don't know, Shosugiban is a traditional Japanese method of wood preservation, by torching it essentially. I tried it first on some scraps before moving on to the main piece. That way I could get an idea of the scorching level I wanted. It came out really nice. That's on here though, which shrinks when fire is applied to it. This opened up some of the joints and exposed them a bit more. I used some satin black spray paint to finish it and conceal all those joints where the fire couldn't reach or the wood contracted. This also helped with reducing the burn residue when handling. Then came the other side of the Oreo. I'm gonna fast forward this as much of it is the same. Enjoy. Time to start transplanting the components. I had all the pieces mostly laid out, so it was a matter of just moving them over. Remember when I said mostly laid out? Yeah, I forgot about the SSD. So I used some double-sided tape to secure it in place. What if you need to change it later, you ask? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I used some small L brackets to mount the hard drive. I only needed to attach it to one end, keeping it elevated and in line with the motherboard. So in order to get the air out, I decided to go with this USB powered box fan. It was big in terms of diameter and it was still low profile and could move a decent amount of volume of air at low speeds. Also it could be completely laid out flat against the surface. Next up, the lights. I decided to install some USB powered LED strips. They would be placed all around the perimeter of the cutout, that way it could provide a continuous glow throughout. Cutting the LED strip was relatively easy with an X-Acto knife, with the only tricky part being getting rid of that silicone to expose the terminals without damaging the strip. I used tacky glue to install the lights for two reasons. First, it sets fast, and second, the adhesive material of the LED strip just wasn't holding on to the wood. Turned on to test and voila! <laughs> Next up was the flange. This piece was going to attach the pipe, which will carry all the wiring within it. I decided to install it opposite to the way it normally goes so the coupler wouldn't stick out too much and I could keep the design slim. Here's the sketch. I didn't have the right tool, so I improvised. Lessons learned though. Don't glue anything down until you've finished making all your holes in the wood. <sighs> Sawdust. It gets messy. Next up was the base. I was going to do a concrete base because it added a nice weight and material contrast to the design. I used some melamine boards from Home Depot as the formwork because they have a really slick surface and concrete comes out really smooth when I have used it in the past. I think I like to use the cordless nail gun a little too much. But hey, they're a quick way to keep things in place without the need for clamps while the glue dries. I used some silicone on the edges to seal the formwork because water can get through and potentially mess up the form as the wood from the melamine expands. I'm drilling the hole for the pipe that would connect the Oreo and the base. I wanted to create a nice detail where the pipe and the concrete base met, so I decided to embed a wooden ring that would sit flush in the concrete and the pipe went through it into the base. So I aligned the ring and the foam work using the pipe and glued it in place. Then I hot glued the pipe and the flange to the ring, sealing it in doing so. The pipe is gonna carry all the wiring like I said earlier, so it must make it through the thickness of the base. So I measured and hot glued a PVC pipe that would extend the rest of the thickness of the base. Once everything was glued in place, we poured. I used some fast setting concrete from Home Depot and vibrated it as much as I thought I needed. I put an ad for needed concrete vibrator. 
but only one guy showed up. Next up was the plexi enclosure. I first cut them all. I cut. I cut them all. First cut them all to the same width. Then I measured the cutout and sliced them to the right length. After that, I went ahead and test fit them to check. Once there, I marked the holes for the air to flow through and for the connecting pipe. Again, I don't have a bandsaw, so I rigged my jigsaw to act sort of like one. This left some rough edges, so I just sanded those down. After cleaning and drying the pieces, I went ahead and used some frosting spray paint. I wanted the light to have a soft and translucent glow, so all the plexi would be frosted. Tacky glue to the rescue again. It sets quick and dries clear and just grabs onto anything. It's crazy. After a couple days, I decided to take the form work apart. Overall, it came out pretty good. I realized that I probably should have vibrated it a bit more to get rid of the air bubbles. Fast setting concrete sets faster than you think, so don't take too long before you start vibrating it. I had some standoffs laying around, so I just used them as feet. I pushed them in just a bit from the edge so you couldn't see them, and that would make the base appear as if it was floating. I fished the wires through the connecting pipe, but not without having to modify the power cord. I lined the two halves and traced where the plexi outline was for this to be routed out later. In order to attach it to sides of the Oreo, I planned to use some magnets. So I used threaded inserts and some elevator bolts. This type of bolt provides a nice solid surface for the magnet to attach and I could always adjust the height easily. The bolts had a lot of play when installed, so I had to ask for some feline help. I used the nut to tighten against the threaded insert and that secured the bolt tight. Next, I routed the outline of the plexi enclosure. That way, it was a clean connection and you wouldn't have any light escape through the gaps. Huh, that looks like a heads or tail Oreo, huh? Marking the locations of the bolts was tricky. Cotton balls have a lot more uses than you think. They made it possible to mark the location of the bolts, even though their height was not perfectly adjusted. After marking where the bolts were located, I screwed in the magnets and went ahead and test fit both halves together. I adjusted the bolts height till the plexi sat in the groove all around and all three magnets connected together. Now for more fire. Takaris! Heh, <laughs> that was pretty corny. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. That wooden ring accentuates the connection really well, and I love the texture and the contrast between the materials. Hiding the wires in the pipe kept the design clean and decluttered. The stand-up feet elevated the base enough for the wires to move freely. I love when aesthetics and function come together nicely. Happy to report, there are no issues with thermals as temperatures stay below 70 under heavy use and about mid 40s under normal conditions. It currently sits next to my TV and it looks really clean. All right, everyone. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. I hope you like the Oreo. I definitely do. I know the video was kind of long, but I hope it was worth it in the end. I definitely enjoyed making the Oreo and making this video. I'm a pretty big self-critic, so there's a lot of things that I know I would have changed uh, had I gone through this again. But I would love to hear your ideas of how I could have made this a better video or a better Oreo. If you have any questions about the design or process or if it's something that I didn't cover in the video, go ahead and ask them in the comments. I uh, will try to answer them as best as I can. Smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Hasta la próxima. See you next time.